This top 10 fantasy football running backs edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by mybookie.ag. Use the promo code SGP for up to $1,000 in bonus bets. That's mybookie.ag, promo code SGP to play, win, and get paid. We're also teaming up with All Things Comedy to run back the 2019 NFL playoffs via Madden Sims and give away $10,000 in mybookie credits. Go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash ATC for all the info. That's sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash ATC. We're also brought to you by Ace Per Head. Ace is the leader in pay per head providers, and they make it super easy to start your own sports book. Plus, Ace is offering up to six weeks free over at aceperhead.com slash SGP. That's aceperhead.com slash SGP. Finally, we're brought to you by Cushy Dreams. Cushy Dreams is a new company with a full line of premium smokable CBD now shipping legally to all 50 States. And if you use the promo code SGP, you get 15% off. That's K U S H Y dreams.com promo code S G P. Welcome everyone to the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean stacking the money green with my partner in picks, right? Real money. Kramer. It's happening. Kramer dog. Bam. Football. Football. Are we, are we closer? We are closer. I think nice. I just saw it uh, 69 days away. Oh no. Nice. 69, 69 days, huh? Maybe it's 68. 69 days till the return of Gronk. The return of Gronk with the New England Patriots. Oh, sorry, the Miami Dolphins. Oh. No, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Oh my goodness. I'm all out of sorts. Well, you you thought it's about a baby it. fucking wheel, man. Well, it, 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 my brain keeps going back and forth because we just did this sim tournament, and then Cam Newton's on the <laughs> Patriots, so I, my my mind's yeah. everywhere. There's and a lot going on, Sean. Yeah, we just uh, we're taping this late Monday night. We had our first night of the All Things Comedy, the football tournament. Yeah, how'd it go, Sean? It went well. I was, uh, I mean, it went especially well for me. I took five units off you. you not a problem. Five, you did take five units. Back off to me. your negative. Uh, I haven't seen if you're you updated your profile to include that you're down six units of to course be the I sim did, god. Sean. That was fun. I mean, and the games themselves were pretty exciting games. As a broadcaster, Kramer, you know, you yeah. just hope for exciting action. Well, you know, Sean, we can't pick a side, <laughs> so we have to hope for a competitive game. Yeah, I mean, a lineman went forty yards or whatever it was on a the, fumble recovery. That that was all I needed to the see. The Texans tackle picked it up, scooped it, almost took it to the house. Couldn't believe it. Forty yards. We tweeted out that highlight. It's it's one of my favorite of these Madden highlights. And then uh, the other uh, Cam Newton drove the Patriots down. He was ready <laughs> oh. to just ice the game, win it all through. And and two plays before, of course, I predicted that Cam Newton would throw an interception. He did. He threw one in the end yeah. zone. God. Given the given the Titans there, and mm. we did this tournament to basically redo the 2019 NFL playoffs, and it's hilarious yeah. that in both games they kind of mirrored what happened in 2019. <laughs> exactly, the Bills got out to an early lead, they blew it in the second half, yeah. and the uh, Patriots had a chance to win it at the end and threw a backbreaking, soul crushing interception. Of course, uh, if you want to see where you're at in the leaderboard, our little uh, contest where we're giving away ten thousand dollars of mybookie.ag credits, just go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash ATC. That has the full schedule of games. Next time we're doing tournament games is Tuesday night, and then Wednesday and Thursday we're back doing some regular Madden Sims. Of course, if you just probably tonight, if you're listening, yes, probably tonight is the uh, return of the football tournament. And uh, yeah, we got some good games going as well. Seahawks, Eagles, late game, mm. and then the early games: Vikings, Saints. Oh yeah, and and this is of course this is the NFC's turn to show out. What will we see? Will we see Carson Wentz show up in the postseason? I mean, if if will Jaylen, Kirk Cousins show up in prime time? <laughs> if if Jadavian Clowney knocks out Carson Wentz oh. <laughs> in this, I. I know there's a lot on the line. People are betting a bunch of money, but there's a decent chance I kick that fucking Xbox. Yeah, that's fine. Because just I can't listen to more uh, ragging about Carson Wentz injury potential. It's real to me, man. That's one of my biggest concerns about COVID nineteen is that if Carson Wentz gets it, oh, no. because then the memes will come. I'll just oh, be no. over my social media. I won't be able to open anything, and then I'll have to come up with like a spin on how mm. well it's good. He got the antibodies now early in the season, and. Uh, so hopefully that doesn't happen. Do we do we think the season's going to start on time? I'm leaning that way. 
But again, Ryan, I believe in football much like Rudy believed he would make it out. Uh, to that I mean, I believed in Santa Claus until the day I realized that there was no Santa Claus and that the closet was the fucking chimney. But where hey, my parents hid did the, the presents. The presents, the presents only came if you believe Brian and much like that, uh, mm, much like point. Santa Claus, if we don't believe if good we become point. cynical uh, team Corona people, then I don't, then I think we've lost the magic of football to part of the magic of football, much like the magic of Christmas is believing it will happen, willing it to happen. Uh, look, here's the thing. On one hand, I really want football to come back. I yes. we've discussed this. I'm already going through the longest period in my life where I'm as an adult, where I haven't visited Las Vegas, the be- beautiful Mecca in the desert. Digits only. Uh, but I also see the sports gambling podcast and the sports gambling podcast network more and, and maybe better equipped than anyone else out there to deal with an extended stay without football, because we've already figured out the replacement. We are dominating. So right now. on one hand, I don't know what, what's better for us, Sean. <laughs> Cause I want that. I mean, well, I want my own personal sanity. I want that. I, yeah, I get it. Um, you know, probably a lot to deal with at the end of the day, we essentially are in a room that's just white and we're wearing white clothes and there's no, there's no color. Everything's the same. And we're all going slowly mad (laughs) as we lose the ability to contrast. So yes, we need fucking football, Sean, but I can't help but think as I watch Colby break down 130 teams <laughs> over on the college experience, which by the way, you should definitely give that a subscribe. I just can't help, but think the ultimate Kramer FML tour activity would be all of this transpiring and then no football going on at the end. So Kramer football is too strong for your fucking jinx. <laughs> fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. All you gotta do is head over to my bookie win totals. Those are there. Of course, all the sim action that we got going on. You can only bet those exclusively at mybookie.ag. Use the promo code SGP up to $1,000 in bonus bets. It's a sweet ass deposit bonus. Of course, the casino open up 24 seven hashtag digits only get yourself some, my bookie blackjack going. They got free tournaments and of course MLB, what a couple weeks away. NBA. We're going to be doing some NBA picks end of the month. It's all there. It's all happening at your sports book, your online sports book destination, the place where anything can happen, including you winning <laughs> thousands of thousands uh, on thousands of dollars, especially when you use that promo code S G P over at my where you can play, win, and most importantly, get paid. Do we have time for a quick Kramer FML sure. anecdote? Let it rip, Kramer. Well, we were out. I was out hiking over this past weekend and uh, went to a new place. Pretty cool place called the Devil's Punch Bowls, the Devil's Chair. If you're familiar with uh, the 138, the backside of the Angeles National Forest. And uh, sorry, Sean, a little loud in my ears. And so we, we go out to this place and it's just your classic LA desert kind of camping area where a lot of Latinos just, you know, if there's a, if there's a people that knows how to have a good time in spite of everything <laughs> else, in spite of the the surroundings, just a, just this little Creek, literally a Creek. Yeah, Sean, you know what I'm talking about? It's July. Now it's drier out here in California. So most of our rivers have turned into creeks and these guys, like they're damming it up. They're building pools. They're swimming. They got grills going. They got easy ups over the river good old time. So we get to this spot. We head in to investigate this trail, do this hike, blah, 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 blah. Get to the end. It's called devil's chair. We see a sign that says trail closed, but it's kind of looks old. looks like it's off to the side. Kids are like, Oh, maybe we shouldn't go on. I'm like, it's fine. We're fine. So we get to the end and we're taking pictures. And, and one of the little ones goes, uh, there's a fire over there. And I'm like, all right, whatever bullshit. There's no way there's a fire. They probably just see some steam coming off something turn around. There's a forest fire going on and it's, it's less than a mile from where we are. So it's like, oh shit. I, I actually called nine one one, Sean. I reported, I reported the fire. Uh, <laughs> what did they say? They, they said two things. They said after they, they realized I knew where I was and I was able to say things like the, the, the fire is a mile North and the winds bearing is, is due North and things like that. They go, can you get out? 
And I said, what do you mean? Can you get out of the forest safely? And I said, I think so. And they go, cool. If you can't go back to where you are and call us, we'll come pick you up. Oh shit. So I'm like, Oh, okay. This is interesting. But in my head, I'm <laughs> thinking, wow, we went to a place called devil's chair. I didn't, I ignored the sign and a fire lit up. What better example of the Kramer FML tour <laughs> it elevating itself above sports. It Ele- all started when Odell Beckham jr. Went on that fateful boat ride and your life has never been the same. And, and so long story short, we, we do all of this. We get back to the, we get back to the campground or to where we parked our car, which is this campground. And literally they're like, they, they had the giant tanker dropping the red fire retardant chemicals to stop this thing. Cause there's people all over the place. We're in a single, like one road in and out Canyon. Uh, it, there are some people that are definitely freaked out. Firefighters are like trying to get people out of there. Not these group that were partying in the river. <laughs> there, as if they were like, we're rushing down. We have these wet masks on because we're breathing smoke, and these dudes are just grilling their hey, carne asada. Like, boy, where are you running? <laughs> and just like you know, like you know, I walk. Hilariously, we get to the car. There, there's there's all these folks sitting in the shade by our car, just watching the firefighters like fight this fire. And I'm just like, hola, and they're like, hola, hola. <laughs> So, so anyway, long story short, I think the Kramer FML tour might be very real to All the right. point well, where hopefully I'll, you just hopefully keep it to the forest area. Kramer. Wow. Well, it could just be that, that we're about to go on a heater. Cause you want to talk about the ultimate, <laughs> ultimate metaphor for a heater You're due for regression and positive given regression. Out straight fire. <laughs> I think it just happened in my life. Anyway, Sean, let's break down the top. What are we doing? Running backs or are we doing top 10 kickers or defenses? Top today? 10 <laughs> fantasy football running backs. Oh, we're doing running backs. Okay. And Kramer. by the way, Sean, real quick, yes. I wore this hex. I wanted to remind people that this real estate right here, unlike Sean, who's paid for by the Philadelphia Eagles, this is for sale. So if you're interested, reach out to a uh, lot of headspace up there. A lot of headspace. There's a, there's good real estate here. So again, I'm not going to, I'm not giving it away for free. I'm going to turn the hat around now, Sean, because <laughs> I, I'm, I didn't, I didn't, we didn't sell it for this episode, but because your kids told you that wearing a backwards hat was cool. They, they did tell me I look cooler with a backwards hat. So thank you. Top 10 running back. Let's go. Who's, Who's your number 10. Kramer? Oh, I got to go. For, I go first every time. You do you want me to go first? Yeah, You should go first this time. All right. Drum roll, please. My number 10. Fantasy football running back for 2020. Gurley? No, fuck Todd Gurley. Is Todd Gurley on your list? No. Okay. Uh, he's interesting though. He's interesting, but he's not a guy you play in a season long league. Are you kidding me? That that knee. My take on Todd Gurley is you have to have two other running backs on your roster before you take him. Yeah. Well, then that's a, then, then he's not a top ten running. No, back. I know. I'm just I'm I'm explaining to the fans the criteria as, to which I might consider taking Todd Gurley. You probably don't even have this guy on your list, Kramer. <laughs> Number ten, Sean the Fantasy Wizard. <laughs> well, yeah. What do I know? I just want two hundred thousand dollars. I'm going so deep in DraftKings. James White, mm. probably not on a lot no. of uh, people's top ten lists. I'm going James White. The guy is a PPR machine, yep. and they're bringing in Cam Newton. What does Cam Newton like to do? He likes to throw to running backs, Nick especially Christian running McCaffrey. backs like Christian McCaffrey. James White could be a poor man's Christian McCaffrey. 72 receptions last year, 87 the year before. 12, okay. 12 receiving touchdowns uh combined the past two years. Doesn't ha- and he only had one rushing touchdown. That's due for positive regression this year. And to me, if you look at the local papers, and that's where you get kind of the inside oh, scoop Sean, where I'm digging deep. Era. Giving- Giving you that inside it's a information. Baby fucking wheel, man. Sony Michelle likely going to start the, on the PUP list. Yeah. So th- that gives James White an extra what, like six weeks? Someone's gonna. But but that's the thing. We this has happened before, where James James White never fills. Like there's always a role, whether it be Rex Burkhead or Sony. There's going to be a guy that's going to take those carries. Now, right. Your, but I but I think James White's going to have like an 85 catch uh, season, and he's going to have enough. Running, uh, you know, el- enough rushing attempts. I think he's going to have over 100 rushing attempts, and I think that will be the difference. Oh, I'm with you. I, I like. I think typically James White is a guy that when you look at the season before, you're o- it always puzzles you as to how he's ranked lower than the amount of points he scored. The only argument that I think is a valid one is he's going to score in more burst style scoring. He's going to have those games where he gets like eight or nine catches and a couple touchdowns. Yeah. 
So maybe again, he's a, he's a nice best ball guy, but that being said, I think, I think you could do worse. I, I like the logic, Sean. I, I don't hate James white. If anything, I would, I would call James. You know, you put it this way. Also, you're going to be able to draft this. Are guy we allowed? Like, is his last name still? Are we okay? Uh, <laughs> his, his last name has been canceled. I I, I will say this. Uh, I think James White is an intriguing guy. I think he's ranked egregiously low by most people, uh, especially when you see him falling outside the top, like the top 24 running backs. Even, you know, when you get to that range of like, do you want to take a stab at David Montgomery? Or would you rather have James White? To, to, to me, there's like a guaranteed role, guaranteed production in that offense with James White. Yeah, and I think I think that's the same with like Devin Singletary is another interesting kind of A or B guy. Yeah, I'm not high on Singletary. My number ten guy, Sean. Uh, I'm I'm going right to Las Vegas because uh, I think he's going to be used early and often. I, you could easily get him higher up we on a list if you want. Uh, the more I thought about this, the more. Uh, I looked back on on the the draft that we did uh, with the sports gambling podcast. We did a little mock draft, and Josh Jacobs came off the board number fourteen in that draft. Not too far off. I think I'm going to take him take him over a, a guy like Kenyon Drake. Uh, if I had to do that, if I was Josh forty seven, say in the mock draft. So Josh Jacobs, I just think it, when you look up and down the board. Outside of maybe a James Connor in Pittsburgh, who I think again, you know, we might talk sleepers later, and I know it's not fair to throw him in that category, but he's very undervalued because he has the upside of being a three down back. And when you look at Josh Jacobs, by conventional wisdom, he's one of the lower ranked guys who has the potential to be the workhorse. So when I'm taking running backs in the top two rounds, they have to have that ability. And maybe that's why I rule James white for me out, but Josh Jacobs, the sky's the limit in terms of volume for him. And if he can stay healthy, he stays on the field. Uh, I see two quarterbacks that know how to check the ball down. And frankly, he looked like a, like forget opportunity, forget team, forget situation. He looked the part last year. So I'm a buyer of Josh Jacobs. I think he's a great second round pick to pair with one of the elite running backs, uh, especially if you have a, like maybe a top five pick. I think you can end up swinging back with Josh Jacobs, and that's a nice one two punch. So I'm going to start with Josh Jacobs at number 10. Well, perfect uh, segue. My number nine, Josh Jacobs. Yeah, you see, you're copying me. This he's, is why you want to go. He's got a second, he's got that second year breakout yep. candidate written all over him. I mean, he had what, 11,050. Or sorry, eleven hundred and fifty rushing yards last year as a rookie. That's pretty good. And again, it, these co- these coaches that just love running the ball. Yeah, you got to get a couple of these guys in there. To me, like a perfect top ten list is a mix of guys you know are just going to get crazy volume because they're stubborn coaches, and then guys who are going to flash because of PPR. Yeah, and and catching the ball out of the backfield. That's the only reason I wouldn't put Josh Jacobs higher. Is all the local stories about him are that he's not going to he's not assured passing down work on third down. So if he was a guy that could be like a third down back and could get even more of those check downs, he only had 20 catches uh, his rookie year. If he could get more catches, he could be like a top five, top three, but they, for whatever reason they brought in um, uh, um, uh, Lynn Bowden or whatever that guy's Bowden and uh, Jalen Richard or whoever the other guy is Richard. They're going to be uh, stealing a lot of his PPR points, but still, he's going to get a shitload of volume. So, number nine, Josh Jacobs. Who's and your, and, and I would, I would encourage you to look at the way running backs generally have performed with Gruden. So, uh, yeah, I, I, again, I think the rain, like when you're talking about these guys in this range, you're talking about guys that you want to take that have the upside because you're waste, you're you're spending a second round pick. You know, I, I think it is interesting to see how low Aaron Jones is falling. Um, and, and he's my number one, nine guy. Uh, I, I am blown away. Why is this? I, I understand touchdown regression. I understand that. I understand they took AJ Dillon, but what about this guy? Did you not like from last year? Yeah. I what mean, about his performance? He can catch. The, I know they have, there's, there's lots of mouths to feed, but last year we finally saw the, what if Aaron Jones season, we've been saying, what if Aaron Jones got the work? He finally got the work. It cashed in the form of a serious touchdown scoring year. And now people are immediately sitting on the, on the heels saying, well, he's going to regress. So sure. AJ Dillon is here, 
But again, if you're talking about guys who have the upside, right? When the story is about, well, there's a goal line back. Don't give a shit. Cause if, 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 if he busts the run from the 10, you don't need a goal line back. So I think Aaron Jones is going to have the opportunity. And I frankly, you want me to get to the edge of like conspiracy theory stuff. What if, what if the Aaron's are, 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 are in a room saying, you know what? Fuck bud Kilmer. <laughs> I'll get you in the end zone. So I'm not I, his workhorse anymore. I'm going Aaron Jones. Number nine. I, 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 I understand why people are finding reasons to get him outside at their top 10. I think again, when you're sitting there to me, fading Aaron Jones and I have Aaron Jones slightly higher fading Aaron Jones this year feels like the too cute move. This is like, this is like, I liked family guy before it was popular, right? (laughs) Yeah. Everyone knows that reference, Um, (laughs) but no, this is yeah. It's, it's an overreaction. He went from eight touchdowns the year before to 16 last year. Even if he splits the difference there, 12 rushing touchdowns, that's still pretty good. And his yardage went from 448 rookie year, 728, and then uh, 1,084 the last year. So he's still trending up yardage wise. He's only heading into year four. He's still got decent legs. Uh, but yeah, again, I have him higher up. My number eight running good, back. Good for you, Sean. Derek Henry. Mm. And he's a guy who's clearly going to have some regression. I mean, 1,540 rushing yards. He's not my top 10, Sean, 16 touchdowns. Well, you can, you can fade Derrick Henry at your own peril Kramer. I'm going to let him know that you don't believe in Derrick Henry. I believe in Derrick Henry. I believe in hashtag tighten up. Yeah. Already, already enraging the Titans fans to me. He has to be there because again, they love running the ball. Like their entire offense. The the reason Tannehill was good as a quarterback was because he's good at a play yeah. action. How do you set up the play action by giving the ball to Derrick Henry? Now, yeah, he had an insane season last year, but this guy is just going to get volume. Like he's going to get you 300 plus touches and he's going to get some touchdowns. Like I think he can even regress Titans offense. Not as good as it was last year. And he's still going to be in the top 10 fantasy wise. Uh, you, you know, I, I guess we'll see 18, you know, what do you have last year? 16 in the regular season, um, 18 total. I think uh, my, my reason for leaving him out was just, I think there's a close bunch at the, at the end there. And I'm not sure I'm, I don't know, but he even the year before he had 12 rushing touchdowns. So that's kind of like just what this dude does. And he's a, and for he's whatever reason, beast. I, when I get to drafting Derrick Henry, I always have him lower on my board than where would suggest that I should take him. So I end up missing out on Derrick Henry, and perhaps I'm more interested in in a in a Derrick Henry in a non PPR format. Maybe that's it. Maybe it's simply like, yeah, his floor his floor is probably pretty high, but I don't know if his ceiling is all that high either. Uh, I think he had his ceiling year last year, candidly. So. Uh, not no, not necessarily a buyer beware, but I'm not cert- like I, if he's in the third round, I'm I'm coming around. Maybe I got pick three in my third round pick, and I have a, a stud receiver and a stud. Yeah, running I mean, running. I get it. I'm I I'm not going out of my way to draft this guy probably, but I still think he ends up in the top ten. Yeah, I guess I just I don't love rel- like drafting a guy who you know is just not going to be a part of the passing game. Period. And and, and frankly, like the dude's got to get hurt eventually, right? <laughs> That's the part that worries me. All right, next up, my number eight guy, uh, and and this is a guy I drafted in the mock draft, Sean, Austin Eckler. Yeah, uh, I huge Austin Eckler fan. Big big upside here. I think what leaves me some pause is simply, like, is it is it going to be too good to be true? And he he gets banged up finally because I think last year we expected it, right? We expected him to get banged up, bigger workload. Is he going to be able to deal with? It? He looked great. He looked great the whole time. He doesn't look like the kind of guy that's going to get banged up. He looks great in the passing game. He looks great. He looks great in all aspects of the game. He, he, in theory, should pair very nicely with a rookie quarterback or Tyrod Taylor. I'm not sure the quarterback is going to matter in Eckler's situation. And while we have heard the backup Justin Jackson get referred to as the baddest football player he's ever played with by former Northwestern <laughs> lineman Eric Olson. I don't know if J- Justin Jackson is going to be breathing down Eckler's throat. So yeah, I'm I'm super high on on Eckler, and I, I don't think I was in the mock draft, but like when I was preparing for this episode, I fell in love three with down, Austin Eckler. Again. Three down capability, 
perhaps I'm too low on him. Uh, I think I took him as the eighth running back off the board in the mock draft. Uh, but yeah, all day, baby. I, I like what I'm seeing here. And, and I think most importantly, no matter, I think no matter how you look at this game script or, or how the season's going to go, like Eckler is relatively, I, I don't know if his season changes based on how good or bad the chargers are this year. I think he produces week in week out because that he has to produce week in week out. Just like I like Hunter Henry. I think this offense does some things this year. I know it, it's scary. Why are the Why are the chargers always so appealing in preseason? They have so much talent on that roster. Joe Mixon is my number seven back to back 1100 plus years at what's really appealing. And it's pretty easy to make the case for Joe Mixon. He's going to get a ton of carries that Zach Taylor offense. Uh, he's had you know, decent passing work last year, 35 catches year before 43, uh, yep. three receiving touchdowns, eight rushing. So he's right there in the mix. I think maybe Joe Burrow in there opens up the offense a little bit. The defense won't load the box as much. Hopefully what I really like about this is they're just, the Bengals are just dangling that contract yep. extension in front of Joe Mixon. And Joe Mixon is, uh, he seems like a guy who's going to have a huge year here, sign a huge deal maybe have one more good year after that and then kind of fall off a cliff. So I think this is Joe Mixon's window and he's going to, he's going to, I don't know when you have a window, I don't know what you do. Jump out of it, seize the window, whatever you, you it is, seize the window. He's going to seize that window. He's going to bust through it. I, I, Joe Mixon. Yeah. Fairly high. I feel like the average person, the average fantasy dork is even higher than on Joe Mixon than I am. But I, I think you think he's pretty reliable to get in that top 10. So what do you got? Number seven, Kramer, your guy, Miles Sanders. Um, oh, I, this is disrespectful. Uh, I really, yeah. Cause I'm not high enough. Yeah. Well, I think you were going to come into this situation and throw him in the, the bottom half of your top 10 originally. And I said, Sean, I think you're going to have to go harder <laughs> than that. He's going number six already. Um, I I've seen him at, you know, I think the consensus has him sometime somewhere in like the beginning of that you know, I'm second. just, I'm do, I'm moving Saquon down one just for this, right? Okay. Uh, Miles Sanders <laughs> again, I, starting with Eckler, these are all guys who have three down capability and have the ability to be bell cow, like serious bell cow. Uh, and, and to everything you're going to say about Miles, you're Sanders. ready to milk that bell cow Kramer. And, it, and it's, a, it, it's incredibly important when it comes down to supporting an injury prone quarterback who maybe needs to take some of the pressure off his shoulders. He, it's we've now at this point, we can say objectively that Carson Wentz isn't necessarily going to perform like a franchise quarterback all the time. And the pressure sometimes gets to him. So what better way to compliment <laughs> what are you that basing type of that player? Off of? What better way to compliment that type of player than put a nice three down back. Who's going to catch the ball nicely in the passing game. He's shown the willingness to run between the tackle tackles. I, I like Miles Sanders this year. I think he he has an opportunity to be maybe the second best running back out of Penn State to play in the NFL this year, but his upside is tremendous. I I, I think if you're if you're sitting in the second round taking Miles Sanders, you're exceptionally lucky. I think you're gonna have to fire a first round pick on him. Yeah. Late first rounder. I, I mean I'll save all my Miles Sanders uh, touts when we get to him for me, but yeah, I mean, he, he's he's also he's awesome at pass protection. Like he's a guy you can leave out there for third down. And there was there's all this Doug Peterson is a running back by committee guy. Yeah, that's what you do when you don't have a, a number one guy. Like oh, they, they spend a second round pick on Miles Sanders because they want him to be that guy. Yeah. And uh I'll save it for when I get to my number six, <laughs> Aaron Jones. Oh wow! Okay, so nice. I'm a little higher on on him than you are. Uh, again, yeah, it's just like perfect situation. I, I don't know if they're really gonna how Coaching. much how much that rookie is really gonna matter. And again, Lafleur loves to run the ball. It's it like Lafleur, uh, uh, you know, Vrabel, Gruden. Like these mm -hmm. guys are old school coaches who love uh, setting up the pass with the run or just consistently yeah. running the ball. I, and I think just the fact that this offense has Aaron Rodgers, that they're going to score points. They're going to have lots of touchdown opportunities. Maybe we don't care so much about AJ Dillon stealing some goal line carries. Uh, maybe we should also just more on a more macro level. Think about have Boston college running backs really ever been that effective. Uh, so I don't know if AJ Dillon is definitely a better talent than, you know, some of the crop that's come out about BC, 
but I'm not necessarily thinking, Hey, you know, that, that was a great pick. I don't, I think consensus was, that was a strange pick. Yes. And Aaron drafting Jones. a goal line back, drafting a thumper. Like, are you trying to, I get it. You're trying to bring in Derek Henry for the North. I, I don't know. I, I just don't see it. I think it feels like a very waste of a pick, uh, you know, one dimensional running backs aren't exactly setting the league ablaze. You might've been able to draft him a bit lower. I love the, I, I love Aaron. I, I liked him last year. I like him more this year. Cause people are 49 hating him. catches too. Like where are those catches going to go? They're going to go to him again. Dylan's not stealing yeah. those. Jamal, like, I mean, J- Jamal Williams is still there. He's always been a yeah, pass but I mean, back, like, but yeah, but I he was you. there last year. Wasn't he? Yeah, he was there Yeah, a little injuries, but yeah, he was there, but, but you know, much like much like the fools on Twitter that seem to think that Ocho Cinco was a good route runner. Oh my God. Do you, if you're, if you're deep on the Twitter, Kramer, Kramer got into a, a heated, I never do this. He got into a heated troll war with uh I wasn't trolling. I was simply pointing <laughs> out that we were agreeing. I think Ocho Cinco is a great player, but not because of his elite route running. Oh, but that everyone was like, yo, what are you smoking homie? Give me some of that. <laughs> And they, it was the, I, I weighed in once on it. And then I'm like, what am I doing? Because the, the, you were, it was just like splitting the hair where you were saying he was good because he was super fast and had great footwork, but wasn't actually a great route runner. And they, they were all like, how dare you? He's an amazing route runner. And you were, you were trying to say, or like point out like, well, yeah, if you're really athletic and fast, you, they end up, you end up getting open. But it's not because of the routes, and like no one could wrap their head around it, no. and it was such a nuanced opinion that it had no business well, being I, on I, the internet. Simply leaning into the fact that if you're a great route runner, you can go to any offense and and do it and be be predictable yeah, and be repeatable. So and and, and when you lose your speed, like the end of his career, you can still you see these old veteran receivers. Do you think Larry Fitzgerald still has amazing speed? It's like no, the guy knows how to run a goddamn route. Yeah. And position himself. That's why he's still in the league. Yeah. Like there's a reason Ocho Cinco only had 10 years. The guy still had a great career, but you can but there's like no in between. People right. lose their fucking mind. Uh, they do lose their fucking mind. And I, I I enjoyed it a little bit. I was a little surprised that people were seriously coming at me. Oh, they were really mad at you, Kramer. It seemed like an obvious, obvious take. Which by the way, speaking of hot take, who I assume neither of us have oh, Leonard Fournette. Hot, 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 Who's drafting him in the top two rounds this season? No, no one. But they are though. They, nah. p- people are idiots. All right, number five. Oh, let me pull my list back up. Oh, number six. I'm on number six. Joe Mixon. You called him out already. I mean, again, this is kind of that post hype hype thing, right? Where we get all excited about a guy, he completely lets us down, and then we look back on what happened to the Bengals season last year, and we're like, well, a lot of things happened. Maybe we don't chalk this up to Mixon being a bum. He still had a pretty good season. Yeah, like that's the thing. You look back in the moment. I remember thinking, "This motherfucker." Well, this yeah, because everyone, me. everyone wanted him to be this huge rookie of the year, like amazing. Uh, well, he was a guy that everyone was like, "This guy could be the third down back that creeps into that tier one conversation." And I think all we're doing is having that conversation a year later. Yeah, this offense I, will be severely upgraded with the addition of Smokey Joe, Joe Burrow, the Stogie ta- Joe. What did I call him? Smokey no, Joe. Yeah, they're all. I, I kind of like Smokey Joe now they that I said work. it. Uh, offensive talent all over the field. A new, uh, you know, young upstart coach. This is definitely the most fraudulent position and take I have on this episode for sure, but potentially fraudulent take because I think at the end of the day, putting Mixon at number six, I'm saying this guy's a first round pick, and that that. While it's not it's not a complete hot take, I certainly think he has like you know what I would love? Give me an opportunity to take Sanders and Mixon with the turn at the twelve spot. Like that no. to me feels like a dream scenario where I've gotten two guys that have that three down upside. And again, I think, you know, whatever you think about the Bengals, I think their offense improves. I think their defense might not improve, but that is good for fantasy. So uh, y- you know what? I'm back. I'm back in on the snake oil. Give me some bangles action with Joe Mixon. We've all forgotten what he did in college too. It's amazing. Yeah. And, and of course I, I, I was saying like rookie, but yeah, he's going into his fourth year. Just feels it feels like he's still kind of young. Maybe it, just cause when you go in Cincinnati, you just kind of go into a black hole. Yeah. Kramer before we get to our top five and we got some listener questions. Well, what shout out to ACE per head. That's right. Ace per head is your leader when it comes to pay per head providers. 
All you gotta do is go to aceforhead.com slash S G P. Uh, they make it super easy to start your own sports book. They provide you with an all inclusive professional betting site. All the lines updated to the second wagers graded immediately top notch customer support going 24 seven. Some of the sharpest lines in the industry don't need to know how to make a website. Don't need to know how to run a sports book. All you need to know how to do is open a web browser and go to aceperhead.com slash S G P use our link and get up to six weeks free as for head.com slash S G P couple listener questions, oh, XFL at XFL underscore Jim. If I'm in the middle of a draft after the oh. first round, I always have trouble deciding on receiver or running back. Should it be a system or a best option situation? Also best drinking brev- beverage. Kramer, I'll let you start. Best drinking beverage for a draft. I assume so. It's like a rose, maybe something light. <laughs> something. No, I mean I, I would I would say a, a, a real man who wasn't allergic to beer would answer that with beer as the answer. I would say maybe a whiskey rocks. That's a nice way. Uh, open yeah, I would actually. I, I go I go beer. Beer allows you a little f- focus a little bit more. Whiskey, I know I drink it a lot on the podcast and live streams, but. Whiskey uh, fires up the blood. I make irrational choices. Yeah, that's that's uh, how I end up with two Eagles running backs. Uh, stuff like that happens when I'm drinking whiskey. Beer, I can be a little bit more reasonable. Maybe something, something like a Heineken, a Yingling, something not too fancy. You don't want an IPA bloating yeah. you. No. Uh, so yeah, you're not trying to have a meal. So something, something a little lighter on the beer spectrum. But yeah, what do you do uh, after the first round? I mean, you shouldn't lock yourself into a, like a strategy. You should, it depends where you're picking. I would say that you, you know, in general, especially if you're doing, if you're doing like serious leagues where people aren't going to make as many mistakes, you really have to walk out of the first three rounds with, with probably two running backs, zero running back approaches are tough. I, I've, uh, I've zero wa- RB theory. I've watched, uh, I've drafted with uh, there's a, there's a guy in the fantasy fantasy community. Um, I think it's Dave Dodd. He's kind of a, a guy who's known in the FFPC circles. I've, I've done a couple uh best ball leagues with him where he employs a pretty, pretty impressive zero running back strategy where he'll not draft a running back for like this till the seventh round and then just go nuts or the opposite. He'll take like seven straight running backs and then just figure out receivers um, to me the way that it, it, this, we have to answer it for this season, Sean. And I think this yes. season we have a, you know, not, not like not too different than last season or many other seasons. You have a group of running backs that have an opportunity to have a ceiling. That's just much higher than everyone else. And then you have a group of receivers who probably you would sp- personally sprinkle in there. You know what I do though, after you're done with all your rankings, like literally just write it down, start with one. M- maybe you go to 60. And just write down the players and start having that conversation in your head, because you know it, where it gets tricky is when you're sitting there in the back end of the second round a, a, in the FFPC and you have that opportunity to take a guy like Kenny Kenny Galladay or do you take a stab at someone like Edwards Hill? You know, like you have to figure that out. And what I would recommend is be prepared, have the list, so you don't have to. That's what people people freak out when when the moment comes. You're like, ah, what should I Panic. do? If you have a list and you're like, oh, my list says I should take this guy. <laughs> Object. Listen, I finished in the top twenty in the FFPC tw- like two years in a row, oh employing God. this strategy. Stick I would to the do. List. I would uh, for this year in particular. I would probably go running back first round, and then go all receiver to like six or seven. Well, here, here's my thing on the receivers, though. I think after you get out of that top tier. I think you can wait a little bit when, when guys like Calvin Ridley are going in the fourth round, Devonte Parker. I, I just think there's opportunity to your point down the stretch. So maybe you, you load up running backs early. You take the run, you take wide receivers in those middle rounds, three through five. Cause there's a little bit more depth there. My number five fantasy football running back for 2020. Congratulations. Saquon Barkley. You made it. Top ten, congratulations! Wow. Okay, so we're just we're just trying to do hot takes today. Uh, no, I, I think he's. I, I think that's fair to say he's going to be top five. Um, injury issues, and again, I think he's going to be facing a heavy box. He does have some breakout games, but uh, he's got a lot of just kind of average, average uh, numbers. He certainly has that boom bust. Uh. So. Definitely a guy you want to have in best ball, but I mean, he's had a lot of like 
just kind of uh, game. The pendulum swings. I mean, we're talking. He's coming off a six touchdown season. I, I I just don't think he's. I mean, two, eight eight touchdowns total if you're counting. Um, and that was in thirteen games. Receiving touchdowns do count, yes. Sean. For the so record. eight eight total. I mean, I don't think he's going to get up to fifteen that he had in his rookie year. So yeah, I think top five makes sense to me. Yeah, I mean, I think if you look at the 2018 to 2019 season, a couple of things pop out to you. And the, the first is, Hey, he missed some games, right? Injury. Second is the big touchdown disparity. So while I agree, there's regression there one year to the next, there's also positive regression coming. So good luck with your hot take of making Saquon number five, very comical that you've put Miles Sanders ahead of Saquon bar. I'll happily take that bet with you. Any, any time Kramer, what's your number all, five? All the units. If you'd like all the units. Uh, Dalvin cook. I, you can't put him any higher, but God damn, is he exciting when he's on the field? Um, I think, you know, he's the ultimate guy where if I'm in a, if I'm in a best ball league, you might find me taking, taking a stab at Dalvin cook over, over one of the big four guys. Uh, I think again, ceiling is there. See, Three Dal- down back. Dalvin cook uh, didn't make it mm, to my it, top prom, 10. Prom, and then this is just, this is just gut instinct. The contract stuff scares me a little bit. Uh, he's had some injury issues. I, I, I don't know something about him, and I agree. Like he certainly has amazing potential and had a great year last year. Just something, ch- something feels red flaggy about me about Dalvin Cook, and I stayed away from. Him. Well, I mean, I think what last year people will point to is he had a lot of touchdowns, but you could argue that the previous years he he was ready for touchdown regression. And I think, you know, t- back to the point of like how many guys on this list have the ability to get 300 carries and, you know, 70 catches. He had 50, he's had 93 catches over the past two seasons. So he he's going to be involved. Our boy Kirk Cousins, you know, not the most accurate guy. He's lost the Font Diggs. I got to imagine he's going to become a, a like the offense has to be about Dalvin Cook. And I think Dalvin Cook now, you know, I would I would probably put a dashed lines you around like you like Dalvin Cook in that uh, I think the reason he's above Mixon and Sanders and Eckler for me is because he has a much higher ceiling because of what that offense could be. A lot of dome games, a no lot, digs again, and a lot, and just the fact that Kirk Cousins is just a shitty quarterback and knows how to get Cook involved. No, I mean you're, now, you're laying out I'll a solid this. case. I'll for say him. this: I've put him in a situation where I've essentially said, "Hey, if I'm sitting there at six, at five, I'm sorry." And this is where I like to have fun. This is where my list comes in. I'm sitting the first. Sorry, Sean, I'm shaking the table. The first <laughs> five. The first four running backs go off the board. The consensus top four at number five. Do I take Dalvin Cook or do I take one of the receivers? I take the receiver. So I'm putting myself in a situation where I'm putting Cook high on my list. Mm. Not many scenarios play out in a real draft where I'm drafting Dalvin Cook, unless I'm sitting at maybe seven or eight. My number four Kramer from the New Orleans Saints, Alvin Kamara. I, I've I've seen people up and down on Alvin Kamara, but you got to look at just the PPR. He's in the league. This is he's going into his fourth year. Every single year he's caught 81 yeah. balls. Like it it's hard to ignore that production. And he only had six touchdowns that last year. That feels and he had 18 the previous years. Definitely a candidate for some some positive uh touchdown action there. And you know, he had 81 catches e- and that was even with missing a decent number of games. Yeah. Drew Brees clearly likes throwing the ball to him. He's clearly going to get involved. I mean, Latavius Murray and Taysom Hill. There's certainly a lot of mouths to feed in New Orleans, which eats into his touchdowns. But 81, 81, 81. That's all I'm seeing right now with him. And and how do you just not keep putting him in there? He's certainly a guy. I mean, I, we'll get to him in a second. My number four guy is Zeke. Oh, okay. And I didn't put Zeke in because uh, I don't. Uh, if you're not gonna have, if you're not gonna you know, take this COVID-19 seriously and just oh, and, and have a, uh, you know, big party and spread your COVID-19 everywhere. Zeke, I'll go home and get your fucking shine box. And perhaps this is insurance because he, you know, the opportunities there, this offense I mean, Kramer, on paper, the is off low. season of Zeke, the, well, it's just the summer of Zeke. It's just the eating has been nonstop. He's he's stoned out of his mind on uh, Twitch. What's wrong with that? Which yeah, I mean, I'm not a hypocrite. 
<laughs> I'm not a hypocrite. But I mean, if you just look from a consistency standpoint, he's done it done it for four years. Over those four years, Sean, he scored how many touchdowns? Trivia question, real quick. Don't look it up. Don't 30. cheat. No. You see, this is where you, 48. Okay. 48 touchdowns over four years. If that's not that cons- is a disgusting act. That's 12 touchdowns a year. You talked about how, you know, you'd be totally okay with that with Derrick Henry. I'm just pointing out Zeke has a very high floor. He is been very high in the off season and God damn, is the helmet even going to fit on that head? I think, I think he has, I think he has fall off a cliff potential and we've He's seen close. it. We've seen it in these running backs, the running backs who don't stay in shape. No one has been involved in this off season program. Dak is possibly holding yeah. out. It, it could get weird in Dallas. That's all I'm saying. Well, and the thing that I would point to you as well, because I, I think people think of Zeke as, as you know, a bell cow back. But if I were to tell you over the past two seasons, he's had 166 targets, that would be alarming. That's an, yeah, electri- I guess he's secretly involved in the passing game. He's or had these people don't think of him. 131 catches over those two seasons. So, but they're bringing in CD lamb, Brian. Didn't you hear the, the Cowboys are the smartest people in the draft room. I think, I think if you let Zeke, if you're, if you're, <laughs> it's hard to let Zeke go. If you're at four, he's hard are, to miss. Are He he's is a hard giant, to miss. He's giant shit. Uh, you know, both, both kids wondered if he was part of the trolls, uh <laughs> world tour movie. I was walking my dog and someone had a, uh, had a, like one of those like chairs you pull out those nylon chairs you pull out and it, on the nylon chair, it's just said soccer and another soccer ball. And then just draped over the side of it was a Cowboys Jersey. <laughs> and I just wanted to take a photo and say, this is everything I hate. Uh, poor Cowboys. Austin. I'm just I, kidding. Fuck the Cowboys. And of course he didn't make my number uh, top 10 for obvious reasons. Known cowboy. My number 10 or sorry. Number three in three. my top 10, Austin Eckler. I'm wow. big. I'm I, more. I just looked I like at that. it. That's that's a good hot take, Sean. This is uh, this guy's gonna that's have a himself a year. Yeah. Austin, no Melvin Gordon. This guy's just a scrappy dude. Yeah. I mean, this is he's just like you know, like Danny Wood had had a couple like huge years. Austin Eckler. It, I mean, look at the receiving. Uh, look at his look at his catch rate. Like he ha- he was targeted 108 times last year, and yeah. I think he could go up. I, I mean, I. You you pointed it out earlier in the podcast, but either it's Herbert, a rookie, or Tyrod, who doesn't like to throw it past the sticks. Either way, he's getting the ball, and you, and the receivers the receivers have had issues with um, you know injuries. I, I just think he's coming off an eleven touchdown game, eight of them through the air, like full point PPR. This guy's just got to be on your team. You know. I mean, Hunter Henry will probably steal a couple of those touchdowns, but like, no, I like it. And, I, and even if they're, even if you're playing from behind, you still get the running back involved. And l- what's the biggest issue with the Chargers? Why did Philip Rivers leave for Indianapolis? Because their offensive line sucked. Yep. What do you do when you have a shitty offensive you line? You bring in ride? Tyrod Taylor. You run the fucking screen. It's like I can just hear that Colby while watching the game <laughs> screen. yelling, "Screen!" He's going to get a ton of screens. He's going to get a ton of easy catches. Austin Eckler, number three. You must love my uh, my mock draft 1.0 then when I had Austin Eckler in the second to pair with Devontae Adams. I love that. It's not a bad one, too. Number three, my number three. Is it a hot is it ba- is it a hot take to to not put Christian McCaffrey number one? Because I'm going to put him number three. Wow. And here's what number three, Kramer. Noted hater of white people. First of all, okay. just kidding. I don't see color. We've we've addressed this <laughs> multiple times. It, is it possible? Now w- let me walk down the theory. Is it possible? We've seen the best season of Christian McCaffrey because he was on a complete dog shit team, complete dog shit defense, complete dog shit offense, and just had to do everything. So you'd say, oh well, Ryan, he's been pretty consistent. He's been pretty good at being pretty consistent. Now. I say, well, let's let's take a look at these touchdown numbers. Because we've been talking about touchdown regression all day. And so what do we say? I just threw out the numbers. Well, Zeke has 48 touchdowns over four years, but it's pretty blended. 
Christian McCaffrey, seven, 14, 19 touchdowns. Sure. It also blends nicely with the curve of his usage. So it kind of makes sense. This is not a big dude. You and I both came after this dude for not being a big dude coming into the league. And he's been healthy. He's missed how many games, Sean? Zero point zero. Now what does he have? He's got a defensive minded defensive first coach. What do defensive coaches love to do? Eat clock. How do you eat clock? You run the ball. So now we're back to Christian McCaffrey dealing with a lot of carries. Here's what I think is going to happen this year. Christian McCaffrey is going to top 300 carries for the first time in his career. He's going to get hurt. Matt rules an idiot old school coach. Didn't take a good job that hit him in the face, went down to Carolina. Now he's a little bitch bringing in wow, an air, brings crazy. in an air raid quarterback brings in Teddy Bridgewater. Hopefully Hopefully they don't go with Bridgewater. It hurts my theory. <laughs> but my theory is that CMAC has a similar amount of touches, but way fewer catches, way fewer touchdowns. He's not getting 15 rushing touchdowns. I'll tell you that right now. I'll bet anyone that right now. He might get a couple more receiving. His touchdowns go go down. His rushing attempts go up. His targets and receptions go down, and all of that is enough to sprinkle in the cauldron of Christian McCaffrey is no longer your number one fantasy running back. And I'll go a step further. I think for the first, I I can't remember the last time the guy that everyone said is the number one guy ended up being the number one guy. And you will remember last year, it was a debate. There was a heavy debate across the four top four Saquon Kamara, Zeke and Christian McCaffrey this year. Is there an argument? No. You're absolutely insane if you think you, you you're not putting Christian McCaffrey number one. I don't want him number one. There's two guys I'll take over him, and honestly, I don't really want to be in a situation to take Barkley either this year because that just hurts too much. Wow, that right. just hurts too much. Well, I, you know, you put the emotion in with your fantasy team. You got all the eggs in one basket. So I say a lot of words to say I think Christian McCaffrey regresses this year. I think I think it's 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 odd to me that we haven't heard anyone really talk about the Christian McCaffrey regression. Granted, I don't listen to a lot of shit, but well, my kids aren't saying that. Here's here's the thing, I my number two, and I'll get to Christian McCaffrey in a second. Oh, my number two, fucking lazy, Miles Sanders. Oh Jesus! Because I did not want to jinx him by making him number one. I <laughs> saved that for someone else. The possibly. Eagles are gonna go fifteen and one this year. I'm being realistic. He had fifty catches in his rookie year, Kramer. Fifty catches. That's only gonna go up. Four hundred and twenty <laughs> yards after the catch. Yeah, Woo, it's smoking my weed. He led the Eagles. This is, I mean, it's more um, insight into how bad their receivers were, but he led the Eagles with 8.1 yards per target. He led the, he had the most receiving yards of uh, led, led his team most receiving yards on catches over 20 yards. Like he he's a vertical down the field threat um, by all accounts. He uh, maybe if Devonta Freeman, if they end up signing him, I would, I would knock him down a couple spots, but like, there's just not they have Boston Scott, who's kind of like uh, Sproles 2.0, possibly. There's just not a lot of competition for Miles Sanders, and you. A lot of people will be like, "Oh well, Andy Reid. They always do running back committee." No, if you remember those years when they had Brian Westbrook, Brian Westbrook, he was like a 19, 18, 20 uh, touch a game guy. He was like the predecessor. If you were playing fantasy uh, football, full point PPR, and that was like. I don't think many people were playing full point PPR when Westbrook was like catching all those balls. Like he would have been, he would have been a dominant. We would have looked at him as like right up there with like LT with like crazy fantasy production. Isn't it interesting how people have this weird perception of Andy Reid's running backs? I, I mean, straight up, just look at what he did with Spencer Ware a couple of years back, or any of the guys that he just plugs in. He he very rarely uses a committee. In fact, yeah. But he, when he finds the guy, he really uses that guy. But he, that's he's not point. afraid to use the committee when it suits him, and and that's what the Eagles have done up to this point. Miles Sanders is gonna be the guy. Like I said before, get your pail out, get your stool out, and milk that bell cow that is Miles Sanders. Well, uh, your statement about getting your stool out, everyone but Carson Wentz. We know he has a weak stomach, so we don't want him taking a shit on oh, the field. How dare you, Kramer? Uh, my number two guy, Saquon Barkley. Uh, again, just absolute regression. Their defense is going to be trash. And that helps you as a running back. 
yeah, because he's gonna get back to the 121 targets that he had the previous year, and that's when he was he was in automatic 20 points a week. And sure, some of that was touchdown, but a lot of that was the fact that he was just getting all these catches. And while there are some mouths to feed, I, I think. <laughs> but is there food? Well, I mean, again, I think you look at what Freddie Kitchens did with the combination of Kareem Hunt, Nick Chubb. You look at what Jason Garrett was doing with Zeke down there in Dallas. <laughs> the running back is a big part of the offense. Oh, you're Sean. making good points. It's just, I, I just love the impassioned, straight face looking me. Freddie Kitchens oh, and Jason Garrett. All right. Uh, Freddie we, Kitchens and Jason Garrett. Do I need to figure this offense out? Do I need to go down the path of now they're both at their appropriate levels in the world? Oh, sure. Offensive sure. coordinator and sure. back to play caller. Again, um, yeah, I mean, come on. I Barkley. Barkley. You got any, you got any Dramamine? The spins getting a little. Dude, but I, I, come on. We we all remember what 2018 was about. <laughs> it uh, was about Saquon's fantasy. Oh, can't wait for that. No, Can't I mean certainly, that. certainly it's possible. The the high ankle sprain for the running backs. I'm not going to say he's injury prone because it's early, but the high ankle sprain yeah. is a worrisome injury in the running back world. Uh, you know, he missed some games and he played some others on one leg, so I, I think it's, no, it's fair and, to think and, he might regress. But I mean, but also like that's that's almost a check mark against him is that he is a tough kid and he will play through an injury and give you lower than dominant fantasy points. I think that the team in general is just a, such a shit show. They've now made another off season invest they, they in the offensive with line Jason Garrett and Freddie with Joe judge. All right. And you know, you can talk all the shit you will, but this is sure. going to be the ultimate season. This is the kind of NFC and the, part. Now you're making me excited about football because this is the exact kind of season. No one sees it coming. I'll I'll go on record right now. The Giants or the Redskins are winning the division. <laughs> All right. Well, that's a hot. You you said I. Oh, hot, hot, now that's a hot take, hot, 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 it, it, That's that's the way the NFC East works. Carson Wentz gets hurt. Jalen Hurts isn't ready to be a primetime quarterback, <laughs> and you know, hopefully Dallas just withdraws from the National Football League. I don't know. They're going to be good, Sean. We're in trouble. I, I their defense is really bad. Like they lost all their, they had a couple of good players on defense that they lost, and then CD Lamb, they didn't need really need help throwing the ball. I mean, if I was them, I would have drafted CD Lamb. I get it, but they really needed to help out their defense, and they didn't. My number one, fantasy football running back for twenty twenty, Christian McCaffrey. Oh wow, it's, racist! Just going with the Irishman. <laughs> is, it even, is he even Irish? He actually, well, his his dad was from the Lehigh Valley. Uh, oh. Easy Ed McCaffrey, local kid, so I got to support him. No, I I've <laughs> shit on Christian McCaffrey a number of times. I thought he was just going to be a PPR bitch, and he is to some degree. But last year, he really showed an ability to be that game changer that they drafted him for. Um, I, I you were hitting on all the the reasons about why he was going to go down. Four hundred and three touches last year. Now this is I this, didn't even get to that. This is old school football. I, I like looked up. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, the, the information on like uh, running backs with over 400 touches. And it's, you know, it links to some like football guys.com article from like decades ago where it's talking about Corey Dillon falling off, but there really is. I have some numbers actually. Okay. Yeah. Throw them out. There. Uh, I think this, this number I have is through 2017 or two that it's a couple of years old, but it's only happened 43 times, 400 touches. Yeah. This is the thing I pulled up is pretty old. But yeah, it's it's still and that came across twenty seven players. So maybe if it's happened in the past couple of years, apologies if we missed a couple. But those forty three occurrences came from twenty seven players, and I'm I, I the source here is inside the pylon. I don't want to steal steal anyone's work here. Um, only twenty seven, and, and so basically the theory is well the next year you're going to be hot garbage so let's look at some guys who have done it recently Le'Veon bell demarco murray yeah how their next seasons go horrible but i and i i have christian mccaffrey number 1 i'm acknowledging the 400 uh, touch I regression i have more i have more edrin james was young he was yeah. 21 guess I, what the next year what did he do tore his acl Fell off the cliff. Yeah, he's certainly up there for injuries. I think guys who had over 400 touches only averaged like 12 or 13 games the following year. But for me, it, it's really just the offense, the setup, the fact that they have no one else really as a dynamic offensive playmaker. And you're bringing in Bridgewater. 
I mean, as much as I, uh, you know, we have roughneck fever and love yeah. PJ Walker and want him to succeed. I don't see him being the day one starter. And if you're Matt Rule, you got to kind of, especially with the short and off season. Hey, what were you guys doing last year? Because you got to do some of that until you figure things out and get PJ Walker in there and get a more dynamic passing offense. But I, I just don't see how you don't heavily involve Christian McCaffrey. And the guy has shown the ability to to break tackles, get touchdowns, and I think he's just going to have an insane volume. So the average decrease in total yards from scrimmage from these players. Now it affects the tr- the pure runners more than the guys who are catching passes. Yeah. Not surprisingly, 22 percent reduction of yardage. Yeah, and I, I think that would apply, like you said, more to the pure runners. I, I think we haven't seen it yet from a guy like Christian McCaffrey who. 116 of those touches came in the passing game and came from like very easy catches. Um, Half of those back, Sean, they missed time due to lower, lower body injuries. No injury concern is for real. And, and if I hope I'm not in a draft where I have the number one overall, because it's going to be hard to turn down Christian McCaffrey. uh, If you're, if you're sitting there at number one, Kramer, who is your number well, one? Well, and overall? I'll tell you, I, I know who I'm taking number one over, overall, and that's because this is this guy is he not only is he set for regression, there's plenty of people out there that will tell you all about Latavius Murray. But you look at the numbers Alvin Kamara had last year, to your point, like not so bad. It was really just the touchdowns. Yeah, and and it was the touchdowns by a lot. And now you look at a situation where uh, sure. There's some mouths to feed there, right? Like Jared Cook's there, Emmanuel Sanders Sanders is there, Michael Thomas is there, Latavius Latavius Murray is there. Uh, they 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 got to bring in uh, the the other quarterback, Taysom Hill, from time to time to run some gadget plays. <laughs> but flat out, Drew Brees, just like Ocho Cinco, is not an elite route runner. Uh, Drew Brees, not an elite arm talent anymore. Period. No. And I think if this team knows what's good for them, this is going to be a big time Alvin Kamara year. I love for him to maintain his consistency in the passing game and the running game. I think the touchdowns regress back up. And I, I, I just think he also gives you the added touch of being that gem where he he's going to score a couple 40 point games for you. Period. End of end of conversation. I, I was hinting at this all off season. Alvin Kamara is the number one guy for me. And I, Sean, I would go as far you to were say hinting this. that. Or did I miss the hints? I've been hinting at the fact that I really like Alvin Kamara this year because of because of Drew Brees' state. Yes, I really like Alvin Kamara to be early and often. He's the guy. And 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 the last thing I'll say about Alvin Kamara is I don't even I don't even know if I, I if it's that close. I see a lot of people saying the top four is a tier, right? Mm. To me, it's Alvin Kamara. Then it's the next three to four guys. Like I almost put Cook and Zeke in the same kind of category. Injury, uh, you know, both looking like a train going down the tracks that might fall off. You, 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 you feel like at some point in the season you're going to be like, "Fuck!" And Zeke is because he's a cowboy, and I'm constantly rooting for him to get hurt. But Cook is just for the other. Anyway, Alvin Kamara, I think he has a huge year. Sean, what did you? He had what? 81? 81, 81, 81. Three years in a row, exactly eighty-one receptions. Yeah, I just I, I think the the other reason to like Kamara is is he doesn't have that usage problem. He's never had over two hundred carries. No, this season. and he still he gets eighty-one catches exactly like without uh, and yeah, while getting banged. Up. I don't know if he's going to get to fourteen touchdowns like he did in two thousand eighteen uh, on the ground. He's certainly going to have more than five. Yeah, no, nailed it. All right, Kramer. Let's knock out a couple more listener questions and give out some deep sleepers. Oh, deep sleepers! I I, at, I, I wrote uh, down regular sleepers. Well, me, these guys are deep. At underscore Trillo writes, "What are the Dolphins doing with Jordan Howard mm. and Breida? Who's gonna start?" I I'll take this. I would just I wouldn't mess with Jordan Howard. I love Jordan Howard, but the guys just. It's one of my sleepers. Can oh, we really? talk about okay, it? Matt Breida. I used Madden Mayhem just like you did to prep for the 2020 upcoming season. And I think you have a team, you've you've touched on this. You have a team that wants to run the ball. You have a team that has a young quarterback. And you have a team that I think check. They have an obvious choice here. We've all seen what Jordan Howard is. I love the dude. He runs super hard, but he eats carries. He's Matt way too injury prone. Is the exciting guy who, while yes, he has injury concerns, that's what's great about sleepers. You take the guy, he's the kind of guy 
If you're drafting early in the summer, you'll find out eventually. If you're drafting late, you'll already know if he's the guy or not. I think this could be a weird year because we don't have preseason and other things like that. But I, I I don't see a world where he isn't the primary back. And at a minimum, I don't see a situation where he's not work getting a lot of third down work. So I think I think he could be a, a gem this year. I mean, I I think he's typically sitting in like the what. RB three, four range in, in the 36. He's a guy you could easily start in your flex or be an RB two. I, I think, yeah, he's pretty deep. I mean, he, he's a guy that like, you know, put him in perspective. He, he, Kareem hunt is being drafted ahead of him, which is just insane to me. Deandre Swift. We have no idea what he's going to be. And carry on Johnson's there drafted ahead of Matt Breida. I think it's a, a Darius guys who just has knees that don't stay together. Being drafted ahead of Matt Breida, David Montgomery being drafted ahead of Matt Breida, David Johnson being drafted ahead of Matt Breida. You're crazy to draft David Johnson. Period. None uh, of these guys, even Devin Singletary. Yeah, not high on him. Matt, and, oh, anyway, one of my sleepers. You mentioned guys. I'm going. I like Antonio Gibson, even though he plays for the. Uh, oh, that's your guy. The Redskins. Um, and when we, ch- I, I was thinking of a fun bit for the show when they do change their name. That's when we'll start referring to them as the Washington <laughs> football team. <laughs> nice. Uh, the Redskins uh running back, he's a legit PPR threat. Yeah. And who likes throwing to the running back? Well, you you bring in um Ron Rivera from the Panthers. Yeah. No perfectly comfortable checking it down to the running back. Haskins probably what's his biggest weakness is probably holding on to the ball too long. He needs to check it down to the running back. And Antonio Gibson, who's ahead of him? Geis and Adrian Peterson. How is Adrian Peterson still in the league? God knows. I mean, dude's a beast. Salute to him. But uh, Antonio Gibson, huge upside. What's that? What's another sleeper? Zach there? Moss. Uh, I think I retweeted this this morning. But Frank Gore, nineteen red zone carries last year. Yeah, nineteen red zone carries. Guess who's getting those carries this year? Well. I think I think you're making a good point about Zach Moss, but again, that goes back to my point of Josh Allen gets a shitload of goal line carries, and sure. why I have him as fantasy football, you know, he had all those, number one. He had all those goal line carries last year, even though Frank Gore was getting no, 19. no, no. I'm saying that I now you bring point. you bring in a young guy who showed out in Madden Mayhem. He showed out in the college football tournament. Yeah, I mean, again, I think. You know, maybe this is getting on the edge of too deep for your standard run of the mill league, Sean. But if you're drafting in deep best ball leagues, you definitely want to take a guy like if you're in non PPR leagues, Zach Moss is very intriguing because I think he's going to have opportunities to score every week. And if you watched him play at Utah, he's a, he's a bills player. He's a Buffalo bills player. Like that dude will jump through a table. (laughs) Uh, As far as rookies, the only rookie fantasy wise running back that I don't, I, don't, I don't mess with rookies, Sean. You know that is of interest to me is Jonathan Taylor. I, I think there's some. Uh, I think there's some Ooh, I think, upside. I think there's a huge upside swing in that Frank Reich system. But Marlon Mack is good. Yeah, but I mean, there's a reason they drafted Jonathan dude, Taylor. We watched Marlon Mack in this studio, and we're just like, God damn, that dude is hungry. No, again, this is this is a deep sleeper. Um, I wouldn't. You know, I I would stay away from Edwards Hilaire, not because I don't think he can, I don't think not because I don't think he's going to be good. He's just insanely overdrafted right now. Jonathan Taylor to me is at least at a point where there's some value in a rookie, but generally, I, I think stay away from a rookie running. Not back. a sleeper here, but last year it might have been two years ago. No, it was last year. I I actually handcuffed Alvin Kamara. I think I took him with like the second or third pick in a draft, and I handcuffed him with Latavius Murray extra early, maybe eighth round. Um, I would totally do that again this year. Not my third sleeper. My third sleeper. Try to get you off the scent, Sean. But I'm going to a rookie myself, and that's a guy who's used to running a read option game at the highest level up there in Ohio State. J.K. Dobbins. I think he is. He's a more perfect version of Mark Ingram. He's a more perfect version uh, of a running back that you want to sit next to Lamar Jackson. And while I think, you know, maybe it's not initially. I think by the playoff, by fantasy playoffs, J.K. Dobbins is the guy on that team getting the points. And, and to a lot of the points that we made during the, the Lamar is not the top guy, top dog in the quarterback category. 
I think they will, you know, I think we're going to see a little bit more of that effort to kind of keep him in a safer situation. And, and that means handing the ball off more. And there's a reason they drafted JK Dobbins. So I, I think Dobbins is uh, you know, for a guy who's being drafted fairly late, like we're, we're talking, we're talking in the same range as like a Sony Michelle, who you have called out as a guy who's going to miss some games. Yeah. Uh, I, I love the upside of uh, uh, taking a guy who is in an offense, you know, they're going to run the ball 35 times a game. John, you get one more. I think my final sleeper, Kareem hunt, which I had mm, he's, cunt. He's, I like that. Yeah. I knew you were going to throw a cunt on the <laughs> list. He's, he's right on the edge of, uh, of being a sleeper, but everyone, everyone is in love with Nick Chubb and, and certainly he's good. He, he got a bunch of carries They're bringing in Stefanski. Yep. I, I think they're going to involve to involve the passing game a little bit more. I think Kareem hunt could be a guy you're starting as your second uh, running back or a flex running back, just because he's got like consistent PPR performance, even in, you know, he was, he only played half the year and he had 37 yeah. catches. No, I, I like it. No, I mean, there, honestly, there's some fun sleepers this year. A couple, he was a guy that they were like just working in, you know what yeah. I mean? Eight, eight games. He only started three of them, whatever starting means for the running back. But like only three touchdowns, but again, that's out of eight games. Like I, I think there's a real boom potential for Kareem. Hunt. Someone we both left off off our top ten list is Kenyon Drake. Yeah, no, uh, Kenyon Drake just got paid. I don't. I don't. Mark really, Ingram also not really high. On. Not really looking to get involved in Kenyon Drake because of that cost. But I loved him last year. He's another Jersey legend, Chase Edmonds. We saw what Ooh. he did against the Giants. He's going very far down the boards and. We saw the way he performed last year. He performed like a guy that's going to be on the field at points. And you're telling me he's going to take carries away from a guy who just got paid. Kenyon Drake just got paid. Come on. I love that. Anyway, the last guy I wanted to throw out there, Sean, or just the last concept I wanted to throw out there. You, if you're, if you're smart about it, you can potentially draft wide receiver wide receiver. Let, let me, at, let me riddle me this, Sean. Would you like a team, DeAndre? Hot, let's just say you, Sean T. Green, number twelve spot in our mock draft. You could have ended up DeAndre Hopkins, Tyree Kill, Zach Ertz, and then I think when we once we get close to the season, Matt Breida and Philip Lindsay. How would you feel about that team? Cause I think those are some guys that it, once the season is closer, people are going to come to their senses when people are actually doing their drafts. But if you wanted to attack elite receivers early, those are the type of running backs you got to be talking about. And, and back to that earlier listener question, one of the reasons you want to do those mock drafts is play around with what happens with your team. If you do X, Y, or Z, if I take those receivers early, will I get running backs picking from the 12 spot? What I've found sometimes is I'm surprised. I'm surprised that like, oh man, I wasn't thinking about this right. I should take the receivers early because there's going to be great talent in the running back pool. And I think if you like guys like most Moster and Brita and Cam Aker, you know, we didn't talk about him, but Cam Akers over there out out with uh, Jared Goff sucks island. There is a lot of intriguing talent. Carry on Johnson even right. Like last year we're talking about Carry on Johnson being a potential three down back. Now he's an eighth round pick. So anyway, we're, we're too much talk, too much talk about fantasy defenses and kickers, Sean. We said it all, Kramer. But uh, before we go, shout out to a couple of new reviews on the old oh, iTunes. Shout outs, I like it. Yes, we threw out that. Uh, hey, if you if you enjoyed the pod, uh, drop a Jerry Glanville reference in <laughs> the iTunes reviews. Nice. Hook you up with some gear. So shoes underscore five seventeen and Julie Sadler. Oh my God, is it a woman listener? Oh mm, unlikely. Maybe just hit, a pen us, name. hit us up podcast at sports gambling podcast.com. Hook you up with some gear. This is a shoes review. All the interviews have been great, especially during this dead period for sports. I love the part of the Glanville interview where if Andy or Holyfield was given a speech and was super quiet and then coach G said, well, how about that? Let's go. Great all around entertaining and informative content. Let it Ride. Well, thank you for that. And uh, indeed, let it ride. We tweeted out that clip, and we got it. Colby was right. We got to turn that into a drop. That'll be a well. How about that? That's such a good like. Uh, it's such a good way to wrap things up, Kramer. So thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. Well, how about that? 
And of course, uh, check out the football tournament tonight, Ooh. aka Tuesday night. And then we're back on our sim bullshit Wednesday and Thursday. Got some more pods coming during the week. Uh, maybe do another uh, fantasy football draft. We we're working on this uh, fun best of concept and uh, possibly some more interviews. So stay tuned, subscribe, rate, and review for the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean second, the money green, and he is Ryan. You can follow me on Instagram at Kramer centric Kramer. Let it ride.